Hello and welcome. In this episode, I'm going to share with you what we have learned about the amazing acoustics of these ancient buildings. Let's go back two and a half thousand years ago to ancient Greece. Then, at that time, the theater was invented as a concept, but also as a physical structure, as a building unifying the acting and the audience space. Ancient drama performances were based on spoken word. The good acoustics of such open outdoor buildings was the enabling technology for large-scale public events to exist, to expand and to be adopted as a universal art form from that era until today. Initially, such theatres were just single square-shaped arrangements of benches, wooden in some cases. However, along with the search for greater participation and inclusiveness of the citizens, the theatre changed to accommodate larger audiences, a permanent construction of the sitting benches using stone materials was adopted, along with the semicircular shape which we know today to have superior acoustic properties to other rectangular or trapezoid shapes. So for many centuries this ancient open theatres retained a semicircular shape for the sitting area benches, named Kilon in Greek or Cave in Latin, folded on a semi-conical surface, excavated on a hill side. In the base there is the circular stage, the orchestra, for the chorus of actors, and also the stage building, Skinny, where the principal actors were performing. In most cases today, these stage buildings do not exist because they have been destroyed. However, the sitting benches in some cases remain intact and you can see that very large audiences, up to 15,000 people, could be accommodated. As we'll see in detail in the second episode, this structure can amplify the actor's voice to reach strong and clear listeners located even up to 60 meters away from the stage where normally speech level would be very low. These theatres were conceived in consideration with the surrounding landscape and are still in harmony with nature. Today we can say that they are also ecological in the sense that they achieve natural amplification of sound without consuming any external power. An outdoor concert, for example, would require many kilowatts electrical power for the amplifiers and the loudspeakers. In contrast, well-preserved ancient theatres continue to be functional over thousands of years and we still use them for similar theatrical performances. The ancient Greeks and especially the Romans could build large roofed public buildings. In many cases, next to an open-air theatre existed also a roof theatre called Odeon. However, it seems that the ancients recognized and adopted a different functionality for the roofed theatres. Enclosed and roofed buildings generate acoustic reverberation, which can deteriorate speech intelligibility, especially if listeners are not close to the stage. This was also the case for such ancient roofed theatres. However, acoustic reverberation is desirable and useful for different type of performances, for music performances, since musical instruments and singing voices sound more natural when they have such reverberation. Using computer simulation you can hear how clear speech sounds inside an ancient theatre. Zef, Anna, Dodone, Pelasgike, Tilothi Neon, Dodonis Medeon, Δυσχημέρου, αμφίδε, σελί, σι νέους, υποφύτε, ανυπτόποδες, καμεύνε. However, acoustic reverberation in an ancient odeon would make this speech unclear and muddled. Ζε, άνα, δοδονέ, πελασγικέ, τυλώδη νέων, δοδόνης με δέων, δυσχημέρου. Αμφίδε σελί, σι νέους υποφύτε, ανυπτόποδες χαμεένε. However, the sound of a flute would be very dry without such reverberation. (laughs) 
this sound will be more acceptable if the instrument is played inside a roof of the end. It's obvious that the ancients could have direct experience for the different acoustics of outdoor and indoor theatres. In Athens, for example, next to the Dionysus Theater, Herodes built a large roof theatre with a capacity of up to 5,000 people. Today, this theatre survives without its roof and this is the case with all other roof theatres because these roofs have collapsed. Today all roof theatres look like ancient open theatres. However, at the time these were constructed as concert halls. This is not just a historical coincidence, because not very far away from these buildings, in the place of ancient Agora of Athens, a few decades earlier, the Emperor Agrippa constructed an Odeon, which amazingly is similar to the Bayreuth Festival Theatre built by Richard Wagner in the 19th century in Germany. Note that the German architects would not know of the Agrippa Odeon because it was excavated years after the Bayreuth Theatre was constructed. You can see how universal such an art form was at the time all over the ancient world in locations spread from Portugal to Afghanistan and from Libya to England. During the late Roman era, the open theatres were used mostly for other forms of entertainment, for animal and gladiator fights, and their structure was also modified for such use. Overall, this cultural phenomenon lasted for five, six centuries until the early Christian era and the Dark Ages when such theatres were abandoned. Let us take now a short virtual tour of some of these theatres as they stand today. During the Renaissance, the ancient culture was reinstated and roof theatres were built again in smaller size to host theatrical performances. Inside, such Renaissance Italian theatres resembled the ancient Odea, and this architectural form later evolved into modern concert halls which for centuries remain the universal spiritual homes for all culture and civilization. In the next episode we'll explain why the acoustics of these open theatres are so exceptional, using as reference the Davros Theatre in Greece. I hope that you found something interesting in this presentation and I look forward for your comments. I hope that you follow up the next episodes. Thank you for watching.